Welcome to the Fairfield Planning Commission for July 25th, 2018. And may we please have the roll call. Yes, Commissioner Wesley. Cone? Grant? Yes. Walker? Donald? Here. Here. Commissioner McDonald, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? There are speaker cards in the lobby that have to be filled out by anyone who would like to speak on an item. Speakers may address items on this agenda at the time each item is considered. Please give the card to us before the time for public comments on the item. Each speaker will be given three minutes to address the commission. Next is approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? No. I have a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Motion passes. Next is approval of the minutes for the June 13th 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any changes to the minutes? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? All right, is there a second? Okay. Uh, all in favor say yes. Motion. Four in favor, two abstentions. Public comments. This is the time for the public to speak on items not on the agenda but within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. Items from the public that are not part of the agenda will be taken under consideration without discussion or action by the commission, but may be referred to staff. I'll open the public comment period. I don't have any speaker cards for public comment. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on public comment? I'll close the public comment period and move on to scheduled matters. For each agendized item, there will be a presentation by city staff. Um, um, for items that involve application requests, I'll ask the applicant to address the Planning Commission if they would like. Then I'll open the public hearing and call out the names of members of the public who have filled out speaker cards to come forward to the podium to speak. A red light will flash to indicate that your three-minute speaking time is up. I'll close the public hearing after all speakers have addressed the Commission and after all of our questions regarding the testimony have been answered. After the public hearing is closed, the Planning Commission will deliberate on the item and may have additional questions for staff. We can't take additional testimony or questions from the audience after the public hearing is closed. The Commission will then vote on the item. Our first item is Item A, a presentation on the Interstate 80, 680, Highway 12 interchange project. And our staff person is Dave. Thank you. Or Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, the okay. first item is going to be a presentation, actually not by city staff, but by staff of the Solano Transportation Authority. We have Transportation Authority who will give a presentation on uh, the planned improvements to the Interstate 80, 680, and Highway 12 interchange. And the reason why uh, we asked SDA staff to come here tonight to give this presentation to you, we have uh, brought to you in recent months projects that front along Interstate 80, and there have been questions that have come from the Commission about how the interchange project uh, would interface with that project. Uh, you'll recall a uh, time extension that we did for uh, the auto auction as well as an interim use permit. So questions came up at that time with those two projects. And tonight, second item on the agenda, there is a proposed grading project that would uh, it's privately proposed, but it would implement a portion of one of the one of the phases of the interchange project. So we wanted to make sure that before you uh, deliberated on that item, that you had enough information about the overall project, to get a sense of the timing, different components of it, uh, and so we invited SDA staff to give that presentation. Kindly offered to give that. Good evening. Uh, I'm Janet Adams with the STA. I'm the director of projects there. And we're happy to come back to the Planning Commission. I was here several, several years ago, probably longer than I can really imagine. Time goes by so fast. But I did want to give you an update of where we are with the interchange complex and its implementation. So it is going to be implemented um, in seven packages. Um, the first package, as you guys all know because you use it, has been completed. 
Um, it constructed a new Green Valley overcrossing and removed the weaving that took place between the Green Valley to westbound 80 on-ramp and the Jameson Canyon off-ramp. Um, so that's been opening and functioning well. The next phase, um, which is what we recently got a grant from the California Transportation Commission to complete, um, is what we call Package 2A. The project will um, reconstruct the bridge over 80 from Jamison Canyon. It'll also uh, what we call braid the uh, movements as 80 Green Valley 680 all come together in that downhill and that ox lane. So that's going to be braided so then the uh, traffic from 80 that wants to go to Green Valley and 680 will go underneath the new uh, connector from Jamison Canyon to eastbound 80. So that's a major component of this project. Um, although I will note this, we recently got a grant from the California Transportation Commission, and as I noted up here, it is funded by gas tax. Um, but if Proposition 6 does pass in November, this project is no longer funded. Um, so that's something just to be aware of as we look towards the construction in summer of 2020. So that's assuming those funds remain in place. Uh, the next phase was what we call 2B. This will construct a new partial interchange at 680 uh, and Red Top. And it's necessary uh, because ultimately the new 680 alignment to 80 is revised. Um, and so we needed to provide access to some of those local connections that are there today up in the old Cordelia area. The next package is package three. This is going to be the first of the big uh, direct connectors that's built. The primary uh, construction of this will build a new connector from westbound 80 to southbound 680. It'll also uh, make Green Valley Interchange a complete interchange. As you know today, there's no off-ramp from westbound 80 to Green Valley. Um, and it'll also make Sassoon Valley a complete interchange. It does not reconstruct Sassoon Valley overhead, even though it's desperately needed, but at least provides a direct on-ramp to westbound 80 um, once this is completed. Also, once this, the traffic is moved um, to the connector, then the existing uh, area where southbound 680 travels between Green Valley and uh, uh, Red Top will be able to become a local two-way road. And that's important to the city because right now there's a lot of traffic problems where that railroad crossing is and that funny stop, like five-way, six-way stop that happens at the railroad tracks. And so this will provide sort of a throughput that uh, um, goes over those tracks. The existing Lopes Road would remain in place um, for local traffic to get in and out of the industrial park um, before it comes on to the old 680 southbound alignment. The next package is what we call package four. This will build the second of uh, the big connectors. This will build the northbound 680 to eastbound 80 um, connector. And then once this is completed, then the work that I just spoke of where the old 680 alignment used to be will be refurbished again um, and so that it's now a basically a four-lane facility and it'll have two intersections put in place and it'll be um, a local road to the city of Fairfield, I imagine, will become the owner of that local road. Um, and this will also reconstruct some of the configuration at Green Valley um, and 80, so it makes those ramps complete in their final configuration. The next package we call Package 5, and that's relevant to tonight's um, item after I'm done. Um, this is where we will build an interchange that doesn't exist today at Jamison Canyon and Business Center Drive. Um, this provides one of the components of our project, which is to basically provide local road network for local trips. Um, so this allows the uh, traffic over in the Green Valley area to come around the backside um, and come into the high school and um, Cordelia, the new Cordelia area. And the grading that's being talked about is the component sort of to the left, upper left side. Um, there's a big hill there today, which will ultimately have to be removed. Um, also, this will provide the connector from uh, northbound 680 to Jamison Canyon will also be constructed. Um, then, what we are looking to do is construct the direct HOV connectors. Um, 80, by this time, obviously has HOVs in the median. So this will provide the median connectors to that HOV uh, traffic from 680 to and from 680. One of the components I wanted to mention as I was going through this um, is Regional Measure 3 passed. It's very good news. Um, so Regional Measure 3 combined with the gas tax allows us to get all the way through Package 5 if we can get grants for construction. $150 million of Regional Measure 3 is dedicated to the interchange complex. And so staff's vision is that we will use those funds to get it shovel ready and compete for construction grants. 
to fund the construction um, of these projects through package five. Yes, that as long as uh, proposition six does not pass, then that would be a reasonable approach to funding the rest of this. If it passes, staff does not foresee how we would fund the interchange complex. Why don't you tell us what proposition six is? Proposition six is basically a repeal effort of the gas tax. And so if that does pass, then those funds do not exist for these large projects. And being a county of 400,000 people, we do not have enough formula funds to fund these large projects ourselves. In regional measure three, that was the bridge toll increase? That's the correct, that's correct. That was the one that was passed in June. Package four, you mentioned, I'm sorry, David. Shortfall, is that included in what you're saying? I see $100 million, $110 million shortfall. Is that what How that do I go back? To Can you go back to package four? Let me go back. So, um, so a good point. So I have $40 million in design and right away funded with regional measure three. So part of that $150 million is going to basically get this shovel ready, which is the design and right-of-way components of it. And then we would seek a grant from the gas tax um, for the $110 million. And you don't show dates on the rest of it. You did show on package one or two. What are the dates for the That's other correct. Project? And so the only um, funded phase moving ahead is package 2A at this point. We just received the grant, um, and so these grants will come in cycles as long as the gas tax is still there. Um, this was funded out of the trade corridor funds. And so that's uh, every, we believe it's gonna be every three or four years that the CTC, California Transportation Commission, will do a call for projects. It's a competitive program statewide, um, but we were successful once and 8680 is, a, is an important trade corridor for the region. Um, so six, as I had mentioned then, uh, we would not, we don't have funding identified to do any of the work on that at this point. And then package seven is the last component and what it does is it, it makes the uh, Jameson 80680 a complete interchange. Though the loop and the um, ramp there are low volume, um, that's why we have it as the last package. Um, but at this point, this is not funded as well. Yeah, but what phase is it that solves the Jamison Canyon into Fairfield that still bottles up every day coming in? Yeah. Because while they widened the rest of the road, they left that just as it is, and that still becomes the biggest commute yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, coming into the bridge, it just boils down to one lane. Yeah. Right, and so um, package 2A resolves that. And so this was originally part of our later phase, package 4, but Supervisor Sparing asked that we actually pull it out and advance it. Um, because of that very problem and it's becoming more problematic as time goes on and so this will build a two-lane connector from um, eastbound Jamison into eastbound 80. So that's one of the major problems that you're talking about but we also there's also a safety problem out there with the weaves that take place on 80 and the the 12 traffic trying to get on and the 680 Green Valley traffic trying to get off. Mm -hmm. and, and on that phase will there be access from Highway 12 to uh, Green Valley Road. Yes. So what would happen is, if you as you're going over the structure from Napa, there's going to be we call it a slip ramp, but there's basically going to be a ramp off the overhead, and that's going to swing around and take you directly into um, the intersection there at at Green Valley. That's why it's kind of hard to see, but if you look up there, there's like two green lines that that move along the top. The lower those true those two green lines is exactly that uh, component that you're asking about. And we can provide larger maps. Okay. Yeah, but so I'm, I'm just going to ask specific questions, and then you can tell me if it fits in or not. So, starting at Susun Valley Road, in one of these phases, there will be an off ramp on the right hand side of Susun Valley Road. So, when you come off of uh, coming, uh, going west, coming from the east, right now you go underneath neath Susun Valley Road and wrap around. Does the plan call for just where you come off? Why do you look at me like that? I don't remember going underneath Sassoon Valley Road. Sassoon Valley Road, yeah, you go underneath it. If, if, if you're going west, getting off at Sassoon Valley Road, you go underneath the overpass and curve around and come back. Right, Knightsville Road, that's the Knights, the old Knightsville Road? Yeah, yeah. okay. So, um, to get on Sassoon Valley Road. So on, on, 
in, in one of these plans, that changes to where the off-ramp is just on Susung Valley, comes around Susung Valley Road instead of underneath. Correct. So the off-ramp will become a more traditional diamond off-ramp. You will not go underneath the structure, right. like you're talking about, and, and curve up to that stop sign. It'll be, um, I call it like a tight diamond, um, and the city staff has seen the basic geometrics. Um, and so it'll, you won't, you'll come on to the um, east side of the Sassoon Valley Road. And then staying with the same intersection, it also calls for a, um, can people coming south on Susun Valley Road get on to go west on 80 and to go on 680? Yes. That, yes. that shows that in the plan yes. also. Yes, yes. And then I think you said this, but I'll, I'll ask it anyways, that the, for Green Valley Road, when you're going west on 80, there will be an exit to allow you to go off of 80 and to get onto Green Valley Road. Correct. And so, um, let's go back. That'll happen with this package. So if you're on 80, you are gonna basically have an off-ramp um, right underneath the new structure that comes over 80 from Jamison Canyon. That'll be the off-ramp that'll go underneath um, the Jamison Canyon traffic onto 80. So, um, now moving to the realignment of 680. Mm -hmm. Um, is that all going to overpass those buildings, or is that where you have to purchase the buildings? And um, what we know today is we believe it's primarily structure. Um, the impacts, we'll, we'll have to know more about it. We do know the alignment. We know it's primarily structure, but it depends on where the structures sit relative to the columns and how high those structures are relative to the lower part of the new 680. So at this point, you don't really know what the cost is going to be because you don't know what buildings you might have to tear down and buy. buy and We've estimated the cost. Um, but until we go in there with an appraisal, we meet with the owners, you know, it's not finalized. We just have an estimated cost at this point. So now going to the old alignment. Once Which just to make note, that's why it's $70 million, uh, for design and right away. Quite high. And then uh, now going to the old alignment after you've moved it, mm -hmm. um, we're keeping that overpass so that we can use that for like a lo Lopes Road, go up and over and around instead of across that rail tracks and the intersection of Cordelia and Brigham. Um, that, uh, that other road is in there, I can't remember. Road. But it looks like you've created with this overpass a new road here, a new overpass and a new road going into Fairfield, the white, the really north-south white area. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that that's showing that a road uh, is gonna be connected there? I think you're looking at the new Green Valley overcrossing that's already open. You're talking to the... Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. I, I, I see, I, 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 I thought I saw the Green Valley, okay. So what's gonna happen is the Lopes <coughs> Road will come up and over and it will connect the Green Valley Road. Yes, so right now, when you go on the structure, there's kind of this dead man area, just concrete and a triangle shape. Mm -hmm. That ultimately is gonna be occupied when the traffic is realigned to the old, to the existing 680 alignment. It needs to come more straight out. But we had to build a kink in it, a little bit of a kink, in order to fit onto the alignment of the existing Lopes Road. Right, okay. So that's, that's uh, where it'll be realigned, where we won't have to be messing with that railroad track. It'll still be um, Lopes Road or whatever you choose to call it for local traffic to kind of get in and out of all those local streets. It'll well, still I, be I, there. I assume, David, that, that you'll just dead end Lopes Road on each end so the road tracks doesn't have to be crossed? Yeah, that, as I yes. recall, there's like a double track. That's correct. So that in other words, there will be no crossing of tracks once this is completed. Correct. No, no, you can, you'll still get across the tracks. But at, at the very southern end, there's a cul-de-sac there, I think, whatever road that's called, like for the uh, tri um, like fire trucks to turn around, so there's a big cul-de-sac there. So that's the far south side. And then at the top, um, the road will end before we have our off-ramp and on-ramps. So you will be able to cross the rail tracks where we now cross it, or you will not? 
I, I believe the crossing, unfortunately, the hard to see yeah. in this exhibit here. I believe the crossing will still exist, but the vast majority of the traffic that utilizes that hit that that location would go away. It would now be on the former right of way. It seems like with all the connections you have, if you're back showing that area over there with all those connections. No, go go to the keep going toward the end. Uh, uh, right, right, r go back one. Right there, but you've allowed access both sides. Why would you keep the crossing open? Just a thought. Please. What's to get to those businesses that are right along there? I mean, because, those because you because just most traffic is going to go over 680. What's now 680? They're going to yeah, but they're, the they're sound really good. yeah, but there's still businesses there that are right. going to need access, for, and so then that street needs to be open. Right. No, the access is they come in from where they got the new access off of Loke Road where it ties in the Green Valley Road and they drive over and they have access to that whole area in there. And then if you want to get access on the other side, you come down over Lopes Road and then down uh, to the access on this side. Why do you need um, I, I honestly, I don't, some, I don't have the drawing in front of me, so I can't describe it It's something to think properly. about in the, in the, in the future. That if, that if there, because it's really hard to tell the design from these pictures that we have in here close in. It all depends on how you get off Lopes Road onto the, the old Lopes Road. The important, the important things here are you, you do have businesses fronting along there, and we have to mm -hmm. make sure that they have access. Right. And then either side of that railroad track, you've got two different roads come in that are come under the freeway and are going to have to connect back in I'm on right here tonight I tell you exactly how all that work you well, got Bridgeport really Road you've got Cordelia Road and the railroad track right in the middle of it. you have to make sure that both Bridgeport and Cordelia Road have connected that's the part I can't I can't do next there is And your your time schedule in a dream world, if everything was funded, what would be the time schedule? If everything was funded, um, we could probably build this in seven years, but it's not all funded. And just to note along your question, I, I mean, this is what we had envisioned um, as we were doing our planning studies, but we would obviously engage the city staff. Um, we think we have an idea where there's good intersections, maybe it should be a roundabout. Those are details that we will work out as we actually get into the design of this. Does, um, in this plan, there's a frontage road that is alongside of um, east, east side of 680, the frontage road there. In one of the plans, if you go, if you move to some of the plan, maybe I can see it further back. Um, wh where it shows the new interchange by the fire. Oh, that's Red Top, uh-huh. There's bright red. You're talking the new fire station at Cordelia? Yes. It's that where you've left, where they're building the new houses, left that open. Right. Yeah, this just, is just, just to the, the right of the le of the legend box. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is the this is the one where we did work with your developer to um, Keep that you know make sure the homes are set back and the retaining wall is not impacting the future. We had one that showed showed an overpass. And it showed the the on and off ramps and everything. Oh. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I've got it here. I was looking. Okay. I was thinking there it was here. So on on the map that we have here, it doesn't address the connection to that frontage road that exists. What 
what Commissioner Walker is looking at is from the environmental impact report. Mm -hmm. Full, if I remember correctly, that there's a portion of Commissioner, are you looking at the 680 Red Top Interchange area? I'm looking at the new interchange. Yes, that's 680 and Red Top. So the um, the geometrics that I showed you and the environmental document are different. And so the environmental document will have a revalidation done. Uh, but these new geometrics are the result of FHWA's um, request to revise those geometrics. Say that I don't understand any the Federal Highway Administration has requested those geometrics to be amended. And so these are the ones that we will do a revalidated environmental document on. And this is what we, at this point, tend to build. So that, that was only my, my concern is that in that new interchange, still connect. I don't see it in the picture. It doesn't mean it's not. So how do, I, I guess my biggest question then comes to, you know, since we are a lower population area than many places within the Bay Area, everybody seems to get this great funding, but you have the numbers and probably can quote it much better than I can. The amount of traffic that goes through this interchange that isn't Solano, seems to me that the priority levels should be moved up. Why is it that we can't to get our legislature to do that. I think it, they recognize the priority. The issue is where would the money come from? And so with the passage of the gas tax increase that did happen, that was what provided funding for that package 2A to be funded. With regional measure three passing, the bridge that's the added uh, $3 that will help happen over several years, um, that has provided this interchange with $150 million. So then my next question is that, you know, this is where we get ourselves in trouble on a regular basis. Um, the legislature thinks they've got great ideas on how to make the world work. So they rush out and they make everybody and they try to push everybody to get to these electric cars, low fuel cars and everything else. But none of the great legislatures ever sat down to try to figure out that they were also lowering the money going into the gas tax. Because electric cars don't buy gas, but use the road. Low, low um, cars that use low emissions don't buy as much gas, so they're not paying as much tax. So when are they going to realize that this great idea that they had with the left hand really screwed up the right? Am I right or am I wrong in that question? I will say the new gas tax increase does provide a um, $100 registration fee for the electric cars. So that is a new added component so the, the new electric car cars now have to pay a hundred dollars a year or one time a year a year well aren't there HOV fees and everything that are also going with a lot of these roads now that are putting money into the transportation that's if they're express lanes then it does provide a revenue for transportation improvements and corridors but not just an HOV lane no because there's no fee associated with it, it to me that's that's where the real funding problem has come in because they've moved so far and pushed so far for these low mileage cars and electric cars that all of a sudden they took away the revenue that they were using for the roads. I do know just what, what um, the Viagra said, and that is there are some um, measures and stuff we've read through, like the chamber, that affect the uh, taxing by the mile. Sure. How much you drive your car. Well, I mean, they, they've talked about it. So the, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, so yeah. obviously some people are aware of making some change on that. But I think it'd be interesting to see how they get there. There is a pilot that the uh, state is performing to do basically a road user fee. It's only in the pilot stages. I don't know if it'll ever become policy or not. I, I just had a quick question about the going back to the 680 realignment. Is, so when it's realigned, it's not going to be at ground level. It's going to be on columns all the way through. It'll be the highest structures in the interchange complex. Okay. So columns all the way from where it curves out all the way to Highway 12. It's, it's not all columns. Uh -huh. um, the areas over the railroad tracks um, and certainly over any road will definitely be bridges. But from there, it's really a matter of determining what's the best design method. Okay. We would, if we don't do bridges, we'll likely build it with high uh, retaining walls to minimize the right-of-way take. Any other questions? Your estimates on the price, is that based on today's construction costs or 
10 years from now, what you would anticipate? Every year we update our financial plan, which is required um, through the Federal Highway Administration, and so those are our current escalated amounts. Certainly, if we don't build them within the time frame, we think we would secure the money, then those costs would increase. Getting back a little bit to uh, Lopes Road, right now that road is most used by the school traffic that goes to and from Rodriguez and Green Valley Middle School, which is where the heaviest no, congestion comes in. Used as a bypass. Well, uh, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it is used as a bypass. So especially when you compound that between like you know two thirty, four o'clock, and seven, nine o'clock in the morning, um, how it, it, does this address any of that? I know that it allows, I guess, more freeway access for people to easily transport. So 680, is this going to ease traffic on 680 where people aren't going to be getting off in order to go down Lopes Road and bypass or on the frontage road like you just well, said that I, needs I, to I have think access? They're going to, I'm going to, uh, people, if there's an accident on the freeway or something, and now with ways, people will find a way around it. But the two major things that are going to help Cordelia more than anything, which, which has taken the brunt of a lot of this, uh, especially when it's taking the kids to high school, is that um, the backside commerce connection on that side, which will allow them to bypass all of that, and then the Lopes Road going over the old uh, 680 interchange, which will allow free throw of traffic, because as long as the traffic is moving, that will speed it up some. The problem is if a train comes across or everybody stopped at that stop sign, and, every, and, and it's very difficult to do, because if you're coming on Cordelia Road and somebody is stopped on Lopes Road coming north, um, people just don't give way. It's it's too far apart. And then you got Bridgeport coming in there, and it's 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 just very difficult to maneuver that sometimes. And then it, so it backs it all the way up. Now now about three o'clock, you've got all those people who can't get on the thing, so they're all trying to take side roads to go around it, and uh, and pick up. What do they pick up the kids out there at uh, three three o'clock, two thirty, something like that at the high school? So then then it just now we're just tacked it on. Which is part ever. of the reason why we are going to also encourage the high school kids to not have their parents drive them to school. And so part of the project will provide um, better bike connection um, on the local street system. We're going to so reprogram that, okay, the kids so to ride their bikes what, what the way you're we saying, did. What you're saying is, am I, what I'm hearing, David, and I don't know if this is a, their issue or ours, but what I'm hearing is that all of the new roads will have bike lanes? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, city road. Yeah, if it's at least a collector or, or uh, an arterial level road, yes. Yep. Any other questions for Ms. Adams? All right. Um, I don't have any speaker cards. Would anybody like to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, thank you for your uh, presentation. Thank you. All right, our next item is item B, a request to excavate and off-haul approximately 363,000 cubic yards of soil for the future construction of the new Red Top Road alignment as defined in the Caltrans 86812 interchange project at 117 Red Top Road. Our staff person is Amy Kreimeyer. Amy, if I can, I, so you can answer my question when you answer my question. About I, I was trying to figure out where this is. Uh, is this is this west of Red Top Road now? So what it would be done it would be done kind of on the back side of Jack in a Box. Yes. If if I'm saying that correct. Yeah. So th 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 we're talking about going back up on that hill, and and the road will eventually end up going behind those commercial places and around. The, the milk farm or in front of it? Around. Around. Okay, thank you. I got it now. I was trying to, with the pictures we got it were not very good, and it was hard for me to try to see what was going on, but I got it now. Thank you. I mean, if when the when this presentation is over, if we need to come back up, I think it's package five, zero in on that. Good evening, Commission members. Today I will be presenting the Ferrari Ranch grading project for development review approval. The project is located on the southern vacant portion of a 46.32 acre site known as Ferrari Ranch on the eastern edge of the city. 
It's surrounded by State Route 12 to the north, Interstate 80, and commercial uses to the south, vacant land to the west, and industrial uses to the east. Uh, the site is dominated by grasses typical of hillside areas. The zoning on the property is AG Agriculture and CRH Regional Commercial within the hillside overlay. And the underlying general plan designation is AE Extensive Agriculture and CHR Highway and Regional Commercial. The applicant is proposing to grade 362,700 cubic yards of dirt, which will facilitate the future realignment of Red Top Road as part of the 86812 interchange project. The, the grading work is proposed to occur in two phases. The first phase consists of the excavation and off-haul of 181,000 cubic yards of dirt. And the second phase consists of the excavation and off-haul of 181,700 1, cubic yards of dirt. Uh, the excavated soils will be off-hauled and used as fill in anticipated future projects that the applicant has. And no stock piling is proposed within the city limit. The proposed grading and excavation work is consistent with the interchange project plans and will help facilitate the future realignment of Red Top Road. The future road project, uh, the first package was recently completed and as part of a future component of the project, a new road will be constructed to connect the 80 Red Top Interchange, 80 and Red Top Road with Business Center Drive. Between Interstate 80 and State Route 12, Red Top Road would be realigned to cross over the Highway 12, uh, approximately a quarter mile west of the existing intersection, uh, and then would extend to Business Center Drive. That would be over Highway 12, over the creek, and over the rail track. Yeah. So here you can see the finished grading proposed for phase one. The area will be hydroceded. It includes rock weirs in the lower elevations to control uh, velocity of runoff and fiber rolls along the contoured edges and the edges will be uh, rounded to form natural contours. Here is the finished grading for phase two. As you can see, it extends westward. The project has been conditioned to meet or exceed City of Fairfield requirements and standards for grading activities. The project also meets the requirements set forth in the City of Fairfield Hillside Management Guideline. And conditions of approval include uh, that each phase shall be completed in its entirety before grading activities cease for any extended period of time. Natural looking edges will be required, uh, which transition to existing slopes along the site's perimeter. Existing vegetation shall be retained, protected, and supplemented where necessary, and topsoil will be conserved. And vegetation shall be established well in advance of any rainy season. Do, do you, are you, can you tell us what that is? Vegetation that to be well established before the rainy, rainy season to help with the erosion, I assume. So it will be uh, hydroceded, and right now it's typical just hillside grasses. Okay, and that's that's good. Not being an expert, that's good enough to stop any erosion and during the heavy rainy season. Yes, and as a part of the project, they're also required to prepare storm water. Additional details as part of that. Sure have any runoff. So here is an existing view of the project site at Red Top Road. Uh, the grading work will occur in a depression along the lower elevations of the site, and off-site views will be minimized by the surrounding hills. This is a photo simulation of the proposed realignment and reconstruction of Red Top Road. 
The new alignments will take advantage of the depression in topography at this location and will be screened by the surrounding hillsides once constructed. Uh, the timing for the future realignment has not yet been determined and plans are subject to change as funding is obtained. To clarify on that exhibit, the, um, the uh, road, wh what you see is road improvements there. That's not a part of this project. Raving behind. Right. Yeah. 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 But have we, how are we addressing, you know, that's a pretty tight section there with this road, present road that's there with the park and ride lot. That in the future, that stays, or would that move back and connect with the new red? Um, I believe that stays. Can't say for certain, but given where this picture, this picture is taken from the freeway, right? Um, and where you're seeing that road in front of the what was then the Circle K today, I think Chevron. Seven Chevron or seventy. Chev I think it's Chevron. Chevron. Um, that road today runs right in front of Chevron, and it's photo sim. It's still running right. Just another one of those intersections of Bridgeport Cordelia Road. The only thing we don't have is a rail track. Because you've got people stopping on both sides, and then then you've got the road entering, and then now yeah. you're going to have a through road. And what you'll see there is there's now a median uh, that blocks the left turn. So make a right turn to do a U-turn at that new larger intersection. In 2012, the Environmental Impact Report Environmental Impact Statement was adopted for the interchange project. Staff has identified potential significant impacts relative to air quality, biological resources, cultural resources, hazardous waste and materials, and hydrology and water quality that are specific to this site and this project in front of you today. The identified impacts can be reduced to less than significant levels with the implementation of mitigation measures recommended in the EIR EIS and enforced by the City of Fairfield Prepared Mitigation Monitoring Program. The applicant will also be required to submit authorization that they are able to utilize the environmental clearances and permits included in the EIR EIS or obtain such permits themselves in their own name. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt Resolution 2018-13 and approve the development review as conditioned. Are there any questions for staff? Couple. Thank you, first of all. Secondly, as you look at a, a project of this size, and if you've ever been on that hill on a windy day, it's incredible. The wind shoots over that hill and whew. So if I'm a business person there and I know they're going to remove 181,000 acres of dirt, I'd be very concerned. Now, I know we have to spray water, et cetera, but I noticed this anemeter, I believe, shall be installed and operational at all times, and apparently that gauges the amount of wind, and when the wind reaches over 25 miles an hour, construction is supposed to stop or the removal is supposed to stop? Yes. How is that going to go logistically? Are we going to be able to real-time monitor that? Will we know a day when it was 27? When this monitor said 27, and we look up on the hill and they're still doing construction, how can we regulate that? So, um, what that what that will do is it will tell you at any given time, you know, what exactly that it report back. Don't expect there would be real time monitoring by by the city. Exactly. Part of that, the app. One of the things they're obligated. Mm-hmm. And so. We review that and work. How often do we provide a support on that? Um, sign the project information where people who have a complaint will know exactly who to call at the city. Great future dust off properly monitoring that anometer. Uh, would be able to record that. Right. And but no effect in, in terms of real time in the moment. I it's just hindsight. So. If real time is available, mm -hmm. um, you can include that as a part of the best monitoring. That is a technology. Available. Can't promise.
Thank you. It also mentions geotechnical reports that will be submitted before the plan is submitted. Is this the geotechnical report that we have here, or is that just the overview of the phases? I'm sorry. Who? Which are you speaking? Geotechnical report? Yes, I'm asking M about mentioned on the plans. I'm sorry. Say it again. Where was the geotechnical report? Speaking? I don't know. My question oh. is, where are they? And if is this a geotechnical report? It says first phase, second phase. So I don't think it is, as I looked at. So I'm interested in knowing is that something we will have access to, as a commission. So, additional geotechnical reports are generally provided during building permit phases as well. Okay. That's a staff review. Our engineers uh, uh, review and make. So sure we've received it. That's. Yeah. That is after uh, plant that comes after planning approvals when they submit for uh, building permit. Okay. Well, I read it wrong. Seems like it said here that would come when the plans were submitted. But I, I could be wrong. Construct. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Other questions? Go ahead. So, if the, I see that uh, once they start. Removing the 181,000 cubic yards of dirt, and they say that they can't stop. They have, it has to be a continuous project, but yet we don't allow it to be stockpiled anywhere else. What if they only need 80,000 cubic yards first time out? That's their responsibility. It's part of part of the entitlement. If they start work, then they have to complete it end of phase. Now it is possible that they come back. That's more dirt phase. Put a sub phase. The final pack phase smaller. So then the main thrust would be to make sure that they finish with the grading and having it look good, even if they don't really remove the whole 181. You, you, ha you have to make the assumption that Galati Brothers knows what they're doing because if they didn't, they probably wouldn't be in business and they'd be hauling stuff all over the place and not knowing where to put it. So. I mean, I'm just, I'm honestly saying, I mean, I was in the construction business, and I, I mean, if you don't put those numbers together, they're going to have this dirt hanging somewhere, and they're going to pay guys, I don't know if they're union, but they're going to be paying guys to haul it back and forth from a set-aside site, and they're just putting more money on top. So I'm assuming they, they've got, the, hopefully they got that figured out. They've been in business a long time, I think. Any other questions for staff? All right, I'll open. One, I do. <coughs> How necessary is this now? Gelati? Seems like we're talking about the Section 5. We barely got approval, tentative based on a, uh, election results um, for two, and we're looking at, in the best world of circumstances, seven years, so we're probably four years away from this even being started construction. How relevant is it today that we move forward in, in creating a big gorge between you know, two highways that won't do anything but be dirt or ground coverage with rains and storms and everything else that we've had in recent years? So the desire to conduct this project now is from the applicant. They have indicated that they have projects that they need the dirt, and so they are wishing to conduct this project now. It is true that future realignment is up in the air pending funding. However, the applicant, as a private project proposed in private property, the, it's the applicant who is, has the need for this dirt now. Public standpoint, there's no immediate need for the part of the construction. The benefit to the public is there's no So it does well, reduce some just of the a, construction Just a quick cost question that for from SDA, a timing standpoint. To, to SDA. Um, if this project wasn't to go through, um, and this, and then later on you got funding for that, you would have to pay to have this done. So the fact that this is being done now is one part of your budget that you will not have to budget for. Did I get that right? All right. Any other questions for staff? All right. I'll open the public hearing. Um, would the applicant like to address the commission? You can take this one over here. You can take this, this one over here. Why don't you head over to that microphone? Um, 
my name is Franklin Rona. I'm the project manager for project. Brian Bonino, who's our civil engineer, is here. Mike Gelati, who's the uh, president of Gelati Brothers, is here to uh, answer any questions uh, that you have. Uh, we feel that this would be a project that uh, potentially could save the public uh, several million dollars if the work had been done prior to the contractor uh, bidding on the project there, that he wouldn't include uh, that excavation in his bid. So I feel it would be a uh, advantage to the public. All right, thank you. All right, I have one speaker card from Matthew Gauss. Okay. Good evening, Commission members. Um, I'm Matthew Gauss. I'm the Director of Land Stewardship for Western Ecological Services. Uh, we own the 282-acre parcel to the west of the grading area. We are, in fact, a large component of the environmental mitigation for this energy project. Um, we have no objections to the grading. Uh, all I am here to simply ask, especially ask for, is that our access to our property is via an all-weather uh, road through the Ferrari Sisters Ranch. And um, when this was supposed to occur, it'd be in construction package five, where we would have alternative access would be developed at that point. And all I'm asking is that at the end of grading that we can still be able to get a piece of equipment on site, you know, in the winter time, because we do have to do that. Because our legal access kind of runs through, I think, the northern edge of their exit. Have you, have you talked to them about it? No, just, I just got this in the mail, so this is, this is the first of it. I, we were aware this was happening. I hadn't heard about it for a while. I'm sure you guys can work. Yeah, we can work. Make sure we're on the right. Don't have any other speaker cards. Um, so I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for comments and deliberation. Being done, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2018-13. It's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I just can I have, uh, if I can, take a leisure if the. Commission will allow me. I just have one other question for STA, if I can, that I think it's an important issue. And that is, um, how much is um, local funding helpful in speeding up and us getting and moving up the line? In other words, if we can find some local funding or things that we've done like this, for example, can this project be put into it as a, as a local funding? to help move us up on the line. You, uh, there's a word for it I'm missing somewhere. But yeah, look, it's like a local match. Match, matching right. funds, that's what I was right. thinking of. Can um, this be used as a, yeah. as a matching? Mm -hmm. right. right, yes, so we could, we could show it was work done in advance and what a, we would estimate a public cost um, of the grading would have been, absolutely. So any of the local matches that we can come up with help move us up? Absolutely, okay. yep. Thank you. All right, the next item is the director's report. Dave, do you have any items for the director's report? Yeah. Three items. First of all, there was a little bit of discussion uh, in advance in advance of the meeting tonight on an item that I'm going to report back to you on. Uh, as I think we've discussed, uh, there is one open position for the Planning Commission. There's Geiger's uh, position. Uh, interviews have not been concluded for that. Like about one scheduled. The earliest that I could see a new commissioner being appointed would be second August, second regularly scheduled August City Council meeting. They actually don't have their first uh, meeting here. It's nationally out. So the second meeting of third Tuesday, the earliest uh, that could happen. Whether or not that will actually get agendized for that meeting, I think. Can we get to keep be, Tom a little longer? Be, well, I might get one more meeting, maybe two. Pointed, you or four more years, hard to say. 
So at the earliest, yeah. it would it would like to be September before we uh, for receipt would be August. So is. We'll get them in. Um, draft environmental review doc and plans for the Pacific Flyway project. The environmental review document was last week. Formal public 30 day period. Sent to the state or state agency. Hang on for just a minute after. Um, uh, in more detail. So we'll give you a copy of that document much earlier than you normally get it with plans much earlier than um, you would digest mitigated negative death. Is this something you can send us electronically? We have a hard copy wait. How so about, is everybody okay with that? Way. Electronically okay? A quick question for yeah. the attorney on this. I represented the flyaway uh, in the past election for the passage of that. Is there a conflict of interest in that? My business represented them in that. Did you get paid? Oh, yeah, I think you did. That's the issue. <laughs> I mean, no, it's the same. They hired my company. Because I, I have the same, I, I mean, I have the issue where I serve on the board of directors of the downtown theater, and the fact that. I don't get any money and they don't send me anywhere or whatever allows me to participate. But if I would have gotten yeah, some money, then. Yeah. I mean, confirm, but it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like it, smells like it, <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> it is. And, with the, and with the new FPC rules, believe me, everything is a conflict. Sure. And I think one probably look at is that was on measure T, which is simply to allow the uh, uh, general plan to be facilitate the project, but that action will approve any aspect mm -hmm. or correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that will be uh, available. Measure P, measure P. <laughs> so the environmental review document is available formally for written public comment through August 20th. Uh, that comment period closes to allow us time to respond to any yet uh, watch television or online. Go to the city's website, www.gov. Development web specific flyway site is on there where you and they had a uh, a little see or come and view thing last night. Correct. That, uh, yeah, they hosted a yeah. learn about the project. Um, final item I want to mention is we will be having our next August 8th. At, uh, one of the items, vision to the Cannon Station subdivision map of years ago, about 100 unit subdivision map for the first big phase of development. Out they're they're plowing that round out there now. They're starting yeah. some of the small little subset of that project, advising it triggers changes. That. Um, the, the other big item that you'll be scoping meetings, environmental impact for for project titled by the applicant Green Valley 2 mixed use project. Proposed general plan and zoning amendment, uh, corner of Business Center Drive, Sassoon Valley Road, west side of Sassoon Valley Road. Struck about 20,000 square feet of scale apartments. Little environmental impact compared to that. Authorized contract. First step in that process is putting the environmental impact 
scoping meeting with with staff to give a presentation on the project. The project is members of the public, commission, but any particular. How far down on Susan Valley Road? So, uh, talking earlier tonight about the current off ramp comes under mm -hmm. freeway and comes stop. You're talking the about the Garaventi property. Garaventi across the west side of Susan Valley Road, just before business. Oh, okay. Where where that where that road comes around and get, gives you access to from the freeway to just on the back side of that curve. I mean, where, where that new road. building, that new health building is being built and correct on the east side. east of that. Is that still owned by the uh, partnership? Okay. Yeah. And, and is there is there any tie to this development from the Oliver Road development to carry over to the same people or anything? Okay. But maybe we can get them to donate the land we need and we can use that as matching fund money. And it can certainly be looked at. In any case, so just be be aware that that'll be on your. You'll get plans in advance. What is this project? So, back to my report. All right. Do any commissioners have any information items? Just Mayor a Walker. quick one yeah. is uh, I tried to get this out of staff, and I think they were confused. I was trying to try to understand what was happening at Highway 12 in Pennsylvania, and they sent me back. That they were trying to run the stuff for the intersection at Manual Campus so the fire trucks can turn the light or whatever that was. And I kept saying, no, I don't think that's what I'm talking about. But I never really got the answer. What are they doing? It looks like they're connecting a pipeline. Oh, what is the work being done right. to Are they connecting a gas pipeline or something there? I honestly don't know, but I can report back. So I, I, I'm. I'm and E's at all the, uh, has all the trucks. It, it, it looks like it looks like to me where the gas um, valves are located in the center islands. So what I'm concerned about is that we've kind of neglected that, and it's kind of an entrance to the city. So I, I'm just interested in what are we doing? Are they have to plant that the in there? Or is there something going on where when they're done they're going to have to landscape that because it's pretty barren and ugly right now. Uh, I'll I'll look into that and I'll report back. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's everything is in the city limits to Highway 12. I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about the other side. Oh, you're not talking about the other side. I'm just talking about where they're working on this side and got the got Pennsylvania Avenue cut down to one lane, and then they're going into the center medium strip, and and I'm, I'm just interested in whether we're going to fix that area in there. Because sure. the area around City Hall looks very beautiful, but you start getting away from City Hall, it doesn't look quite yeah. good. Any other information items? Well, it's just a question. Uh, it looked like they were doing something in the old Fresh Choice building. Is anything happening there? So nothing that I know that public affordable from the from the property owner. Has there been any activity at all with like the old um, Radio Shack and all that up by where you know the new Smart and Final is? There's that whole strip section. I know they're doing the facade, but there's several stores that have just been empty for years now. Which, which building are we? Between are no, um, well, no, between the Dollar Tree and and now where Dee Dee's and all them are, that where ra the where it's set back the Radio sh old Radio yeah, Shack store. Behind the Oh, behind the burger. Yeah. That whole area there has uh, been empty for e several years. Now. Yeah, I have not heard any progress that. Um, we have a new team on our economic. That's a lot of work was put into redoing the old Kmart. Really makes Parking lot over there by that Burger King. That was like you needed a four wheel drive yeah. to get in there. Took not too long. All right. Any other information items? All right. We're adjourned until August 8th, 2018. Thanks. Robin, right back. I'll send you a lecture.